Hello, in the following video, we will be checking the Checkout Blocks app. This is a Shopify app which Shopify recently acquired, and as you can see here, from the latest Shopify editions, it is now free. With it, you will be able to access many of the features introduced with Checkout extensibility, such as Checkout Page Customizations, Thank You Page Customizations, Custom Discount Codes, Delivery Methods Customizations, Advanced Checkout Styling, and more. All of this directly from within this app without needing to add code yourself. So as you can see here, it is exclusive to Shopify Plus at the moment, with the exception of development stores, where you can also use this app to test it out. Before getting started, keep in mind this is not a replacement for Checkout UI extensions nor Shopify functions, as even though this app covers many of the most common use cases for those, if you are trying to build something custom, there is a chance this app doesn't do that. And in those scenarios, you will have to code that yourself. If that's your case, then there are videos in the channel where I walk you through how to do that. I will be linking those in the video description. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Now, here I have a development store created, and the first thing we're going to do is look over here for checkout blocks. We are going to look for this in the Shopify app store, and we are going to click on this one at the top. You can see over here an overview of what this application does, and you can see that the developer is Shopify. If we scroll to the bottom here, we see that there are two plans. Most of the features are included in the free plan, although there is a paid plan with some extra features such as upsell blocks. I'm going to install this app. And now let's see how the app looks like. Once installed, you're going to see this onboarding screen where you're walked through how to use the different features this app comes with. But we are going to skip this for now. Now here we have the home screen of this app and starting at the top we have blogs which are using checkout UI extensions and with this we will be able to add some of the most common elements such as text banners, custom fields, line item messaging and more. Next we have customizations which are using Shopify functions. This let us customize the delivery methods and the payment methods. We will be able to rename, reorder or hide them based on certain criteria. Next, we have discounts. These are also using Shopify functions, and through them we will be able to create discounts that have more custom behavior. Finally, there is a fourth option, which at the moment appears to be hidden for development stores, but its name is Branding Editor, and it uses the Checkout Branding API to let you easily customize the most advanced parts of the checkout without needing to call the Checkout Branding GraphQL endpoints yourself, as we had to do before. We will be seeing later in the video how to access it, even if the option is hidden for you. Now, let's start adding some blocks to see how they behave. For this, let's create a block, and then let's select the static content, which is the simplest one. Let's add this to checkout. And from here in apps, I'm going to select the static content and add this to checkout. In content type, this is how this block will display. We have this as plain text, but we can also display a banner or a border box. Let's have this as a banner. And then here we have the banner title and then the banner description. This description also supports markdown. So if we wanted to have bold text, for example, we can have two asterisk here and then bold text. And this is now bolded. We can have this in italics if we just use an underscore italic text and another underscore. This also supports links in markdown. So for example, you can have my link, this goes to https.shopify.com, and there you have a link. And you can also over here edit the font size, the description, font alignment, and other aspects of this. You can also make this collapsible if you want, but you will have to have a title for this to work. If I click on this, this expands and collapses accordingly. You can use this blog to display messaging that should be seen by every customer. For example, if you will be having shipping delays due to some weather conditions, you could have a banner at checkout mentioning that. Now let's save this here. And if we click on sections, we can drag this static content blog and place it anywhere in this as well as a checkout. For example, if we want to have this near the banner, we can near the header, we can do that. If we want to have this above the order summary, we can do that. We can even place it in the footer, although for a banner that doesn't make much sense, but we have that option if we wanted to. And if we save this and go to checkout here by clicking on view, 
you can see that at the bottom, there is my banner. I can expand that, I'll throw in this bar over here, let's close this preview. There it is, I can expand it, and here is my banner with my link. Now let's add another block. In this case, let's add the line item edit and upsell. And what this block will let us do is to let the customer edit their line items directly at checkout. They will be able to remove line items, increase their quantity, change the variant, all of these within the checkout page without having to go back to the store, visit the cart page and do that from there. So let's name this line items edit. Display rules over here. This is if we wanted to display this conditionally. We could add a display rule based on the conditions or the criteria we see here. We could display or hide this. But if we keep this empty, then it will be displayed for all customers, which is what we want. We can also here enable or disable different options. These are the default, the default ones, but you can also have a selling plan selector in case you want to have that and in case your store sells product that have a selling plan. You can also see here that we can upsell different items, complementary items, but as you can see here, that is for the paid plan, so we cannot enable that for now. We have the option to show this expanded by default, but they don't recommend this, so we will keep this unchecked. Let's save this. And to enable it, we have to set this to active. And now let's add it to the editor from here. It says that the name of this is line item edit and upsell. So let's open the editor. And from here, we're going to do for line item edit and upsell. And add this at checkout. You can see over here that we have different options to edit this button. For example, by default, there is a link, but we can also make it look like a button by selecting this. We can change the label to something like this. And let's keep this as edit for now. And we also have options here for editing the remove button. Now, if we click on this button here, you can see that we have the quantity selector. We can increase this and the price and days here and here. Now, let's preview this. Here you can see once again that I have my quantity selector. And let's go back to the store. And let's add this product, which is the one that has variants. Let's go to checkout. And by clicking here on edit, we can, once again, increase this quantity, but now we have this remove button. And also, if I click on edit for this one, you can see that I can change the variant. For example, I can select power here, and you can see that this changes. The price doesn't update because all of these variants have the same price. But if they had different prices, then the price and the image will also update. I can also remove this. And now I don't have this remove button anymore because if I remove this one, the card will be empty and therefore I wouldn't be able to be at checkout. This block we just added will also show in this old blocks menu. And if we click on this, we can see how many times this block has been viewed. And we can also edit it from here by clicking on edit block and changing some of the settings we saw initially. We also have the option to export this block. This exports a JSON and then over here, when we are adding logs, we can import from a template, which is a JSON. We can drop this here, and we will have the same settings we created a moment ago. This is useful when you have different stores, when you are, where you are testing different blogs. For example, you have a development store to test blogs like this. And then once you are comfortable with the settings you have, you can export that from here and import it into your MyFo store. Now let's see the last blog we will use in this video which is the dynamic content block. This is one of the most powerful blocks available. And with this, we can render content dynamically. So for example, let's say that we have a conditional banner here. And let's add a display rule. So if the card subtotal is greater or equal than let's say $1,000, we are going to display a header same premium packaging. So let's say that this store offers premium packaging for orders that are above a thousand dollars. And let's add here a banner. The title will be your order qualifies for premium packaging. Actually, let's put this in the content. And then let's make this a success banner. 
let's save this and let's make this active now over here let's copy this internal id this will be important once we go to the editor so let's click here on add to editor and let's open the editor over here let's look for dynamic content here let's add this to checkout and over here you can see that this doesn't show our banner the reason for that is because this order is not above a thousand dollars however with that internal id we copied if we paste this here we're going to force this to show even if the conditions are not met so here we can see that this premium packaging banner is shown and we can from here reorder this and maybe put this above the order summary so let's save this but you have to make sure actually to remove this before saving so let me save again because if you keep this then the customers will be able to see this every time so now let's mute this you can see that i don't have my banner yet but if i increase this to two now my order is above a thousand dollars and i see this message over here now you might have noticed we have this app block id setting this is useful when we have multiple blocks of the same type we can give each one a different id and that way the checkout blocks app will know which one to display where for example let's, let's give this one the id of one and save and now let's create another banner as a dynamic content block this one will be let's say dynamic banner 2 we could give this a better name but for this example this will do and let's give this the idea of 2 the display rule for this one will be when the card subtotal is less than a thousand and the content here will be a banner and let's say he, let's say here increase your orders value to thousand to get premium packaging and this will be an info banner let's save this let's make this active and now let's add it to the editor So from here, I'm going to look for dynamic content. Add it to checkout. And then I'm going to select the ID. This one is two. We can see here the banner because this order is below $1,000. And we can then drag this and place it right here because with the conditions we have, when one of these is displaying, the other one will be hidden. So let's save this. Let's go to checkout. And as this order is below $1,000, let's see this. But if I increase this to above $1,000, we're going to see the other one. No, we will not because we also updated the ID. We have to change that as well. We have to select the ID here to be one. We save this. Refresh this page. And now we see this message when the order is above $1,000. Once again, if we go back, we see the other one. Next, let's go to customizations here. Let's create a customization and let's create one for delivery methods. First, let's see which delivery methods we have available. So let's quickly fill this, put a test address here, such as this one, so everything else is filled out. We have economy and a standard. Let's say that for orders below $1,000, I want to hide this economy option. So let's select hide here. We can use this, but let's create one from scratch so you can see how that is done. Let's add a method and we can use name is or name contains. In this case, we know exactly what the name is. The name is economy. So let's type this right here 
And then for the rules, let's add a rule here. When the card's total is less than a thousand dollars, we are going to let's name this hide economy option for less than a dashboard. Less than thousand dollars. Let's save this. Let's make this active. And now, if I go here and refresh, we only have a standard. But if I increase this to go over a thousand dollars, we have the economy option once again. And let's see if I select this, but they go back below a thousand dollars. That economy option gets removed, and I get the other one selected by default because this is the only one available. Now, let's quickly glance over discounts here. These at the moment don't offer that much. The options here are very basic. However, the interesting thing compared to the regular discount that Shopify has is that let's compare this here. If we create one up for a month further, this ones from the checkout blocks app have these kind of rules, which are similar to the other rules we saw a moment ago. So if these conditions meet, then a discount will apply. However, the conditions at the moment are pretty basic. For example, we could maybe use a customer tag discount, although we could replicate this behavior from here by targeting a specific customer segment and then adding customers with that tag to that customer segment. Maybe an interesting one will be for a specific Shopify market. For example, if you wanted a discount code to only apply to customers in a specific country. You could do that from within this app. But for more advanced use cases, you will likely have to rely on creating your own Shopify function and adding that custom logic within it. Finally, let's see the branding editor. While I don't have that option enabled here, I can add branding to the URL here. And now I have the branding editor. This editor is like a user interface for the Checkout Branding API. If you recall from past videos I've made to edit the styles at Checkout with a new CSS, we instead have to use the options Shopify exposes. Some of those options were exposed from the Checkout editor. So by clicking here on Customize, and then here in Settings, you can change things like the ads and colors, the buttons colors, the background color of this section or of this section, etc. However, some of the more advanced ones are only available through the Checkout Branding API, requiring you to write GraphQL to edit things like the border radius of the form controls. So let's make a couple of changes here. For example, let's change the info color. We could not change that from this editor here. The only colors we can change are these. But now if I want to change the info banner color to be, for example, something like this blue, I can save this, and if I refresh this here, this is now blue. I can also reset it, and it will go back to its original color. And then, let's also change the border radius, the corner radius of the form inputs. So let's say that we don't want this to have any corner radius at all. You can see here that they are slightly rounded. Now if I refresh this, they are not rounded at all. And we can, once again, click on here to reset to default if we want to revert this to its original state. We can also export the customizations as a JSON and then import them from here. This will let you customize things in one store and then import those customizations into another store very easily. And that pretty much covers most of what we have available through this application. As you can see, it tackles many of the things a merchant will want to do, but the most advanced functionality that Checkout Accessibility exposes still requires custom development. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next one.